here with us in the studio, and, and uh, Easy G has been trying to uh, arrange this for a while, and here she is. Amanda McCarthy is here. Hello, Amanda. Hey, how are you? Good, good. Eric thought, because he said to me today, he's like, oh, you've never actually met Amanda, have you? I was like, no, actually, I've known. I've... I think I interviewed you the first time like 12 years ago. It oh, my was, God. Yeah. Yeah. I've um, Matt, Eric is one of the few people I've known longer than you. Oh. I've known him for a long time. Wow. Yes, yes. <laughs> Stefan Philbrook is in the Facebook live chat, and uh, he says, Maura and I uh, saw uh, Amanda play at the Hop Knot back in the day. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So when I, yeah, when I interviewed you the first time, you had that song, uh, the name escapes me, but it was about bullying. Oh, that was long ago. Sticks and Stones. Yeah. So what what year was that? That must have been 2012. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, wow. Yeah. So you've, um, wow, you've done a lot since then. You've put out a lot of music. And did you recently move to Nashville or sort of you're in the process of moving or? I did move. Um, I just had to come back here to tie up some things because I moved. It was kind of a quick move. But um, I do. I live in Nashville, Tennessee now. Wow. Well, congratulations. That's, Thank you. Uh, you, ever see, you ever see that guy over there, uh, Alex Preston? He lives down there, too. You know him? I know him. I'm not, like, super well. Like, we've met, like, once or twice. We're Facebook friends, but he's really cool. He's super talented. I met him when he played at the Rex Theater last year. That's cool. Pull that yeah. mic right up, Eric. Yeah. You have a, you're, you're, you, you drift away from A lot of singers are, 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 <laughs> are doing their thing now, including you now, going natural. Well, that's, uh, that's a great place to, uh, to be. Yeah, including years ago before you were around, that, uh, and I know you know him pretty well, uh, Jimmy LaHoo. Jimmy LaHoo. Yeah. That's he tried to I make it. a go down there years ago. It didn't really work out, but obviously he still does his music career here. And now he's got a family and two kids and a wife. And well, that's the way I down. see it. Like, even if it doesn't go, you know, according well, to the plan, it's I can go, always come I'm back. Not, <laughs> right, I'm right. not saying it's not going to work out for you, but I'm saying <laughs> he, tried to, he tried to do it as best he could years ago. And just, but he's still a great performer. Oh, yeah, he's incredible. He just did the giddy up for prostate cancer there for a yes. uh, local show for uh, Chrissy in the Chill Spa. There. Yes, yes, absolutely. Had, had great show. I didn't go, but. What, what made you decide to make the move? Good question. It was kind of a long time coming. I'd already been started thinking about it, like, right before I got pregnant. And, of course, that kind of stopped it. And then it was just kind of a year's battle of, oh, it's not the right time. It's not the right time. It's not the right time. And then eventually... You know, I'd finished putting my album together, and I was like, all right, before I leave New England, mm. I, I can't put this off forever. I have to get my album out, and I have to at least be nominated for a New England Music Award. Uh, I put my album out and won a New England Music Award within three months of each other, and I went, oh, crap, I need to move now. Wow. So yeah. I set a deadline. This was last September, and I said, by next October, I will be living in Nashville. It's a promise. And even with COVID, I wasn't going to break the promise. Yeah. And, uh, I even beat the deadline. So. Wow. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's great. It, you, the rest of your, like your family is still, like, I think you had your mom with you when I met you, right? Was it, or, or somebody. It was probably either my mom, my aunt, or both. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the rest of your family is still here, right? You're... So <laughs> I, I kind of feel like I cheated at moving far away because I, brought a lot of people with me uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> obviously my daughter came with me along with my boyfriend and my daughter's father i know it sounds weird it's fine everything's fine okay, okay. and my mom <laughs> so it's all of us living together in nashville so like oh. i did move but it also doesn't feel like it really because yeah. most people move and they're lonely and they have no one and i kind of cheated that's fine <laughs> no if, if if you can uh if you can figure out how to do that that's great i mean uh there are uh, there there are television sitcoms where where they've done that where the entire cast moves to a new city. <laughs> so, no, that's awesome. Very cool. Good good for you. Um, did you want to play something? Well, maybe you play something and then we'll uh, talk some more. I haven't heard you play live in a long time, except for I think I I think I've definitely heard you like leaving here at night. You've been playing at Panucci's. Yeah, but I haven't gotten to actually like see you in studio play live in in years been a long time. I got a quick yeah. question for you. In the hippo a while back, it said you're coming on a new album, but then I saw something on social media that it's not happening now. Yeah, so um, it was kind of like the timing was just awkward. So I had interviewed with Mike at the hippo, and then I kind of found out something from my management that I should maybe hold off releasing music. But like oh. I found off like right after it had been sent to publication. Oh. So it was kind of awkward timing. So it's going to be delayed now? Yeah. 
So next uh, next year? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't even know how much I'm allowed to talk about regarding it, but I don't know when I'll be yeah, able okay, to see music. <laughs> I'll just recycle. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I haven't talked about it on the radio for a while, so I'll ask the, uh, the performer when she gets here. No, that's okay. Because if you don't know, nobody will know. <laughs> <laughs> right. I thought I saw something on your social media page that it was delayed. So. No, yeah. that's okay. Um, do you want to pick my first song I play? Ooh. Uh, about, about, uh, San Diego. I had a feeling you'd pick San Diego, but I wanted oh. to make sure I let you pick. <laughs> what, 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 now, why did you know he was? Is that the one that, that makes him cry? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I, I don't know. If, uh, <laughs> one time. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. That's. I, a, I've cried many times on the station. Yes. Yeah, he he really. He actually time. has. He's wept many oh, times. Yeah. yeah. Well, but because uh, I was overtired one time. We used to die on. And I cried another, when I'm overtired. Another time, too, a friend of, mine, friend of mine died at the arena. So. Right. Yeah. I, I shed a few tears, but it wasn't. Uh, I am a crier, though. Yes. I, I, yes. I, you I are. To, I hate to admit it, but I am. But I've cried many tears. All right. Well, let's hear it. All right. Uh, Amanda, <laughs> Amanda McCarthy, everyone. San Diego. Here we go. <laughs> Another year goes by. You look me in the eye and we both know. Tomorrow comes anew and I will come unglued because we both know. When you take off in the morning, the rain will hide the light. If things had just been different, maybe we would win the fight. Maybe we could fly away to San Diego. Explore another universe just for you and me. Maybe we could fly away to San Diego. Take my hand on the boulevard, dance with me on the beach Where no one has a hold on me And you can be who you want to be Nothing else would ever come between us and San Diego How could I be so bold to fall for foolish gold I didn't know You won't be back for me Like in the fantasy that I let go When you call me in the afternoon I'll say that I'm alright But secretly I'll be here wishing That you might miss your flight Maybe we could fly away to San Diego Explore another universe just for you and me Maybe we could fly away to San Diego Take my hand on the boulevard And dance with me on the beach Where no one has a hold on me And you can be who you wanna be Nothing else would ever come between Us and San Diego don't let go I leave the life I know Maybe we could fly away to San Diego Maybe we could fly away to San Diego Explore another universe just for you and me. Maybe we could fly away to San Diego. Take my hand on the boulevard, dance with me on the beach. Escape the demons from back home. Start a new life on our own. Just say the word, you'll never be alone. You wait for me in San Diego. Wow, very nice, very yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. I ever, I ever tell you a story? That we, 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 uh, yeah, seven years ago. The uh, taste. <laughs> oh no. 
Oh, uh, look what you've done, Amanda. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. It's, I'm overtired. Yeah, it's okay. What, uh, what, 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 yeah, I know. no, it, it's a beautiful Plus song. Also overtired, too. Yeah, yeah. What, 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 what. Anyways, uh, the, uh, it was funny because years ago, the, uh, I was living in this, this boarding house and this guy was thrown, the guy that owned the place, I won't repeat his name, he's no longer with us, God rest his soul. He was thrown away by mail, so I had to go down to the um, post office and get one of those crazy boxes and it cost a ton of money. And it's money I didn't really have. The post office over here? The guy, a guy, a crazy guy, was throwing away your yeah, mail. Yeah, the guy was supposed to deliver the mail, but he was drunk all the time, so he just throw it away. Oh, he yeah. He just throw away the mail instead of delivering it. Yeah, that's like you can the... never prove it, but I think he threw it away because when he passed away, the, the lady that was in charge, I got my mail after that. So it was really strange. But anyways, long story <laughs> short, I happened to um, walk into this uh, uh, in town uh, for the first time, and this lady, uh, well, maybe a couple times, I've walked in there. And uh, Lauren was there, and she said, hey, I got this ticket for the taste of downtown. I said, what's that all about? And she said, well, it's the, it's the, uh, you go eat uh, different, uh, different places, and you have a little bit of food, and it's reformers, and, and little did I know, Amanda McCarthy was there. Oh. My sister. That's how you met? Yeah, she was playing with the YMCA, yeah. Oh, okay. And I was, I was thinking the other day when I was, dri- when I was driving, and I was uh, <laughs> I was uh, taking the uh, shuttle, free shuttle. Over there. Was, Pull that mic up, easy. I was taking the free shuttle there the other go. day yeah. around town. It brings you all around town just to go to the basket. The green dash? Yeah, I called it the free shuttle. And I was reminding, reminding myself that she used to play in some pretty bad, pretty crazy places back in the day. I don't know if she remembers. <laughs> yeah. I went to see her play one time, and there was a little tip jar, and I threw a dollar in it, and nobody else did. It was only like three, four people there. Right, right. So they've come a long way from those places. Yes, Ab- absolutely. Yes, I have. yes oh you God. have. Well, you know what I remember is... Um, Some dives, I used to call it. There was a show. Do you remember uh, it was up at the, the... It was at the Beacon Building on Elm Street. I was... The, it, it wasn't my show. It was a certain other person's show in the downstairs. We don't talk about him when he's not here because he gets upset. But it was somebody else's show, and it was in the downstairs of an office building. And he had you come in and play. And I was there because I was like yeah. involved in the show, but even though it wasn't my show, and it was all it was very weird. And I remember, I, I remember feeling badly for you because <laughs> the whole thing was so weird. And you it know, was, I had dealt with weirder, but um, yeah. And yes, out of respect, I won't say anything, but yeah, I remember. I think my boyfriend at the time was with me, and we left, and he was like, "That was weird." And yeah, I was like, it was a little weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know. One, weird things build character. Two, even back then, I felt like every opportunity was an opportunity. And oh, I, totally. I still yeah. feel that way. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can yeah. I ask a question? Of course. Right ahead. Uh, I know a lot about acting. I used to write about it, and when I was young, I uh, acted. But uh, when you sing, I don't know about singing, except having my baby with Carol Robido on a, a karaoke night. <laughs> <laughs> Do you sing to somebody? Do you uh, do you pick somebody out in the audience? Because sometimes uh, actors in the theater will, will will see somebody attentive and they'll play towards them. Other actors, it doesn't matter. Interesting. What, uh, as a singer, do you, or does it change? Do you sing to anybody? Um, this is gonna make me sound insane, but I just need you to bear with me here. I kind <laughs> of look at you on, on, on this show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I dissociate when I sing. Like I right. know that I'm wherever I am. But I sing to my memories. I sing to whatever made the song. And that I think that's why I have such a hard time establishing eye contact while I'm singing. Mm. Right. Because I'm I'm in another world. I'm like I'm here and I know I'm here, but I'm not here. Yeah. yeah. Um, my mind's in a totally different place. Um and I think that's just at least um at least for my original music. Not always that way with the covers, but yeah. When I play my original songs, I'm definitely somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. That make a lot of professionals like act are, are like that. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. they just can do it no matter what the conditions. I guess that help. That must help though, right? If you have like r- rowdy audiences or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And of course, I mean. That's not always the case. Like, if an audience is really, really, like, into it, like, mm. I'm much more present. But if it's more of a background music thing, I just drift away. Okay. <laughs> do, do you only do solo stuff now? Or because at one at one point you had a... Did you have a band at one point? Once upon a time before COVID, I did have a band. You did, yeah. Um, and it was so much fun. I love... I mean, I love playing solo, of course. But with the band, it's just... 
totally different. There's more behind me. I can kind of bring out like my rock side a little bit. Um, but I have played, I did play one band show since COVID. Mm. I remember my last band show before everything shut down was at Panucci's on March 7th. And then I played with my band on August 1st. And that was the last time. Yeah. So it's been slow lately for the obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, and I definitely played solo more. I just think because there's more opportunities around here. But Yeah. Um, well, especially now because it's yeah. easier to do a show where you're, you know, distanced from everybody if you don't have a, well, a band around you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so it, I, I do miss the band thing, but I, it yeah. was pretty active in the uh, before times. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, with the band, would you do, w would you do the same songs that you do when you play solo or is some of this the same or would it be a, a completely different thing? There's a lot of crossover. Um, we would do some songs that like, I can't really play like, uh, shipping up to Boston, for example. I don't mm. really know how to do an acoustic version of that, but they mm. would just, you know, rock it out or like, you know, um, I might play slow songs like Breathe by Anna Nolik in a, at an acoustic show, but not really with the band. So, yeah. there, but there's a lot of crossover that we do a lot of the same, but it's just a different vibe. Okay. Okay. And um, now are you, so are you signed to a label now or you mentioned management? Like, like how, and I don't know how much you want to say about that, but. No, I don't mind talking about that. I'm not with a label. Um, I am with a management company, um, but it's like a lot of what I do is, Unexclusive, and this is also unexclusive. We're kind of in a trial period, and we're gonna oh, decide okay. later if we want to be exclusive. But um, I'm working with them more, more so for my songwriting. So, like, I still book all my cover gigs. I don't have to pay them for stuff they don't help me with. Um, but they're kind of helping me um, just work with other songwriters and find some other opportunities within professional songwriting. Um, mostly with the pop stuff, my country stuff still pretty independent but there is a little bit of crossover recently okay okay so then your so your deal with them is um not to get too into the weeds but i'm a music business guy as you know so so effectively you pay them for what they help you with but you do what whatever you do so right is separate right now we're just on like a percentage basis so like okay. if someone took one of my songs tomorrow and wanted to use it for whatever and it was a three thousand dollar payout i'd give them 20 percent and i'd run with the rest okay yeah yeah so that so they help with licensing and things like that yeah, yeah because for a singer songwriter i mean that can be it's funny too a, a lot of people don't realize that that can be a very lucrative avenue mm -hmm. and it's and and people don't even you know i mean there's a lot of um there's a lot of songwriters who you know the general public doesn't even know who they are necessarily. They're not household names, but they're so enormously successful because you know other people have recorded their songs or or Jimmy or, Webb, or a Jimmy song Webb. is yeah or a song yeah. has been licensed for something. Um, have you had? Has anyone else recorded your your songs or? So uh, I have had two bands record my songs. Um, the first cool. one was um, a long time ago. It was a band called Coda Sky. Uh, they recorded a song I wrote called I Don't Deserve It. And I can talk about this. I don't know how well known it is, but um, April Cushman is coming out with an album called The Long Haul. And um, I was one of the writers on the title track. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, very cool. And I'm I'm working on some more of that as well. That's a lot of what I'm working on um, in Nashville and with the management. I wanted to put my album out before leaving here just for me. Yeah. But I really want to get into writing for others while I figure out what my next album should sound like because right now i have no idea <laughs> yeah yeah is that a yeah. big is that a big announcement tomorrow no um it's a different announcement she's already announced the album she did a whole um and we were talking about that she got really lucky she did a whole gofundme for it and raised the whole amount of her goal and she did it like before COVID happened yeah and we we're like you were so lucky if you, if you <laughs> waited another month she just went to nashville the other day we hung out <laughs> yeah oh, right. oh cool we picked her up and we hung out no um april's april's awesome i love her there's been a bit of an evolution in her name, by the way, on this show because oh, Eric, yeah, I know. because oh Eric, my God. Eric Eric does the entertainment report, <laughs> and uh, when when he first started mentioning oh April April Cushman, he kept he kept referring to her as April Cushion, <laughs> and then and then we kept, so we kept oh having to correct him, and then it it turned into April Cashman. And oh, and then eventually he got it right. So, but but this was a weeks, you know, week after week. It was probably about a month long Tradition. process for you, before you finally got it. Oh, I got a question. <laughs> now around here now, the uh, outdoor dining is going to be ending in like thirty days, and they're not allowing performers. 
to play inside right now because of the COVID. Is that the same situation down in Nashville? So I'm really con- rules, right? I'm really confused with New Hampshire, and maybe someone yeah. tuning in who knows a legal thing or two like can chime in. But um, you know, some places are saying you can't perform inside, you can't perform inside. But yeah, nobody's allowing it. But last I knew, mm. with the rules, because there were a few places where I've done this, you can have a solo performer inside. Mm. So like I could go play, like, and again, I don't know if this is legal, so I won't name the establishment. But like one day in the summer, it was really, really hot. They brought me inside to play. Oh, and I feel like yeah. they wouldn't do that if it was illegal. They right. didn't seem like the kind of place that would do that. Okay. Um, I know mass is weird. Like, they can have a, a solo performer inside, but in mass, they can't sing. It has to be instrumental. Okay. Nashville is kind of a free-for-all. It kind of scares me a little bit. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Volunteer state. Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, I don't want COVID to stop me from living my life, but I wear a mask. I keep my distance. Mm-hmm. Um, and down there, just nobody does that. Um, so I things are... read that, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Things are very, quote-unquote, normal down there. I try to keep up with the pace of the industry while also keeping myself safe. Yeah. Maybe, uh, especially with a child and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So it's um it's definitely trickier down there than it is up here. I would be very surprised and I mean obviously disappointed, but just surprised if New Hampshire doesn't allow solo performers inside. I can see not wanting to get a whole band together. Yeah. Which... I think that might change soon because the uh governor is is, is uh has already changed some rules about the uh restaurants so you're gonna have to do some gonna have to do some stuff in between mm-hmm. barriers inside try to save some of these local restaurants downtown, especially here on Elm Street. Um, really, I think really we need suffering. another song. Well, uh, <laughs> quick, quick question first. Michael Alber in the Facebook live chat has a specific question uh, for Amanda. Uh, he wants to know what kind of guitar you play. Oh, it's a uh, good question. I'll take this stuff off real quick so the camera can see it. It is a Taylor. Um, oh. I don't know the exact model name. I'm terrible with model names, but um, I remember it was 2016. I had to buy a new guitar and, I certainly didn't think I was going to come across a tailor I could afford, but I did, and it was like love at first sight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah very cool, very cool. Well, yeah, let's uh, we'll go with John's suggestion. If you want to play another song for us, that would be uh, that would be wonderful. Sure, uh, Eric. Do you have another request? Should I do a new one? <laughs> uh, I thought that a song about the breakfast. Okay. You have a song about breakfast. Yeah. I do have a song about breakfast. After let's play the other one there. <laughs> the new one that you've been playing when I, when I come into the studio. Well, maybe, maybe we'll we'll play that at the end of the show. Yeah, at the end of the show is a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know yeah. Amanda's never heard that. Right, right, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Amanda. <laughs> so uh, this is a song called Love and Breakfast. Um, I wrote it. I kind of like switched the story around. I wrote it about pretend characters, but um, I was sick after a gig one night and slept in my car, and my boyfriend met me for breakfast the next morning. So that kind of sparked the idea, and then I took pretend characters and crafted the song. Okay. Exit 36, 7 a.m. On the road, slept in my car again. Morning coffee, wish I had it friend. But then walked in a blue-eyed boy And I never thought that I'd be thanking God for love and breakfast Sunday morning, hallelujah To keep my soul in check and There's no better cure for a hangover Than blue-eyed boys and bacon just like Mother Mary used to make it Here's to love and breakfast His sunrise smile shot me like a gun He sat with me and asked me where I'm from then he showed me all around this little valley town he loves I need to know this boy And I never thought that I'd be thanking God for love and breakfast Sunday morning, hallelujah To keep my soul in check There's no better cure for a hangover them blue-eyed boys and bacon 
Just like Mother Mary used to make it Here's to love and breakfast Phones exchanged in places, names Walking back to that cafe But this time, ordering to go And I never thought that I'd be thanking God For love and breakfast Sunday morning, hallelujah To keep my soul in check There's no better cure for a hangover Than blue-eyed boys and bacon Just like Mother Mary used to make it Here's to love and breakfast Eggs at 3.02, 7 a.m. On the road, slept in my car again. Oh, very nice. I've never told nice. that story years ago, my... my uh... Did you go... <laughs> uh oh Oh. You have to warn me so I can take some pictures there. Oh, Eric. crazy! This this isn't Poison. about a, this isn't about somebody throwing away your mail, is it? No. Okay, because that would make me cry. <laughs> this is years ago. My uh, parents know I'm a big fan of you. My father said, "Hey, was Amanda McCarthy on the Dick Clark's Rockin' New Year's Eve?" I said, "I I don't think so. I think it was the other Amanda McCarthy." Oh, that's right. Did I tell you that story? You have I remember. Yeah. I remember you texted like six, me one day. Like you six were years ago. You were like, "Congrats on being on Dick Clark's," and I was like, <laughs> "What?" <laughs> she was on. I didn't see it because I was work. I was. Uh, this is like maybe five, four or five years ago. I was over working at the arena, and it was the um, Monarchs when they were still playing. There's nothing going on at the arena now because of COVID. And the uh, she was on like at eight o'clock. You know, she wasn't. She wasn't the performer that came on when the, when the ball dropped. Oh, but obviously it wasn't you. <laughs> I mean, I wish it was me, but uh, there's, 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 there's another Amanda McCarthy out there. Well, I mean, if they look her up and they find my website, I mean, I won't argue it. But yeah, that there, was you not me. there you go. There you go. Matt, I don't know if you knew that. There's another Amanda McCarthy. Out I did there. know that because that came up during one of our previous interviews. Yeah, I forget like how you uh, dealt with that. So, because you've you, you've had actual communication with her, right? If I remember correctly, I really? don't think I've communicated oh. with her. Oh, there okay. are people. Um, so I remember I was younger, um, hmm. and I would go to shows and, you know, there'd be a flyer up and there'd just be this blonde smoking hot blonde, you know, bombshell on the flyer. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's not me. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's when I became, um, and this probably ended up being a good thing. That's be, that's when I became so obsessed with like social media. I was like, I want, you know, when people search my name, I want to be the one that comes up. Yeah. I hooked my website up with all sorts of keywords and you know, search engine optimization and, um, you know, bought domain names. And yeah. um, I just became a social media fiend because some people were like, well, you could take a stage name. And I was like, I don't want to take a stage name. I want to be Amanda McCarthy. That's who I am. Yeah. And they were like, well, you could be Amanda Lee. And I'm like, no, I <laughs> personally, I think the first name, middle name thing's tacky. Sorry to anyone who does that. I was like, <laughs> I'm not doing that. I, so I just, I became like obsessed with just growing my social media. And I mean, for the most part, I think it worked. I actually did have a run in like last year where there was a mix up, but it was because like someone she actually knew was also on the event. So at least that made sense. <laughs> oh, oh, no kidding. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> As a songwriter, are you Amanda McCarthy or is there because in the Screen Actors Guild, there's a John J. Owen Hopwood, you know, so if I ever had gotten a SAG card, I'd have to be John C. Hopwood because of the things. But oh. I'm not sure about as songwriters. No, yeah. Song, You're Amanda McCarthy, you know, like songwriters. We can all have the same names. Okay. It's not like the Actors Guild. Um, right. Oh, okay. It's just inconvenient, if anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Um, Stefan Philbrook in the Facebook live chat uh, said uh, she has a great range, quiet, intimate, acoustic. And one night, I was out at Panucci's. That's uh, right. I remember. The MB, I, when, I was there when she was backed by the band, and she sang "Mama Kin" better than Steven Tyler. Ooh. Oh, very nice. Well, that reminds me. So, uh, tell us about the. Um, you, you, you're you're you're, pro you're probably sick of talking about it. At no, this I'm point, not. But the, okay, good. <laughs> but Steven the, Tyler. The, there's a picture of of you with uh, Steven Tyler. 
I'm not sick of talking about it because I still don't believe it really happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it is, it is very I amazing. I saw Stephen Tell in 72. He, they used to play here in Manchester for hardly anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then they charged $4 at New Hampshire College, and we were all outraged. We had $4 in 1972. <laughs> right. You know, like when you're 12. Right. right. One of the biggest stars in the <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Look. So this story was really funny because um, I was on my way to the gig that night. And my boyfriend Tom was with me, and we were joking about it. You know, we were going up towards Lake Sunapee, and we were, we were like, oh, haha, maybe our boy Steve will walk in. Like, we didn't actually think that would happen. Um, and then I was playing. Well, I played my last song, and a young kid walked in. So I played another song, which was perfect by Ed Sheeran. And then I look up, and I see this man just gazing at me. Yeah. Like, not even just like, you know, sitting there. Like, he was very intently watching me. And I was like, oh my God. That's Steven Tyler. And I don't know how. I didn't miss a beat. I guess all these years of powering through drunk people mm. coming up to me at bars had yeah. curbed my ability to keep going. Yeah. But I did just kind of glance at Tom, and I'm just like, you, you should look over right now. But I tried to keep it really discreet. So um, so I finished the song. He clapped for me. He went to sit down. And then I just kind of stood there. And I stood there for like 30 seconds. And something me and Tom had been talking about on the car ride up was if Steven Tyler ever walked into one of your shows. No kidding. Again, I really don't, I still don't believe this happened. Wow. Um, he was like, if Steven Tyler ever walked into one of your shows, um, what would it be? And I was like, oh, it'd be Mama Kin, hands down. And um, probably because Stefan really loved when I sang that song. So I was like, yeah, I must yeah. do that song well. <laughs> I was like, it'd be Mama Kin, hands down. But I'm sitting there in this little quiet Irish bar and I'm like, it's not the vibe to do that. Yeah, um, yeah. So I knew I would do Angel. And I sat there for just like 30 seconds and I was like, I got to do it. I got to do it. So um, I just, I, you know, I wasn't going to, like, embarrass him. I wasn't going to be like, ladies and gentlemen. But um, no. I just kind of kind of quietly, like, leaned into the microphone, and I was like, I don't know if this is kosher, but I'm going to regret it for the rest of my life if I don't do it. So I mm. hope you enjoy this song. <laughs> and then I played Angel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then I just kind of finished, and I sat down, and I couldn't even, like, eat for, like, a half an hour. <laughs> I was just shaking. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I just, I wasn't going to go up to him. I didn't want to disturb him while he's eating. Nobody wants that. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Um, but I finally, I had one copy of my album on me. Yeah. Just one copy. And I was like, all right, well, after again, going back and forth, I was like, I'm just going to write him a little note. Thank him for being an inspiration to me and just give him my album and then be on my merry way. Yeah. Um, but when I had the manager bring it over to him discreetly, he was like, oh wait, she's still here. So then the manager told me, and I'm like, okay, I'll wait longer. And then when he was done, he came right up to me. He talked to me. Um, he complimented my voice. He gave me hugs. It was just like, and he totally didn't have to do that. Like, yeah. there was not a single part of him that was obligated to do that. But he still did, because that's just the kind of person he is. Yeah. And um, if you look at the photo, I think you can even see I was, like, mesmerized. Wow, <laughs> yeah. I was, like, off on another planet. I didn't believe it was real. And I still don't. Um and what's funnier, the other reason I don't believe this is real and that I'm just living in a simulation is that morning I had announced a new single coming out called Steven. Oh. <laughs> Not about Steven Tyler. It yeah, was about yeah. something totally different. Yeah. But I was like, that morning I posted releasing a new single on Friday. It's called Steven. Pre-save it. Check it out. Um, and it ended up being really convenient marketing when all the <laughs> newspapers started hitting me up. But that was not planned. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You probably meet a, a lot of pretty well-known people in Nashville, too, I would imagine. I haven't yet. Yeah. Um, I've heard it's very common, but also people don't make a big deal out of it. Right, right. Like, yeah. it's a very different culture down there. Like, yeah. Like, you know, if, you know, Toby Keith walked into a bar and I grabbed a picture and posted it, nobody would blink an eye. It wouldn't be like right. up here where I had, you know, newspapers coming yeah. after me, like, yeah. which was cool. Um, I felt like kind of like actually cool for like two weeks and then COVID happened. Oh, uh, yeah. So then it all yeah. tanked. But I, I was on a good roll for like two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, you well. know, just uh, Nashville, that's the place to be. Because think how long Willie uh, Nelson and Chris Christopherson, they yeah. were writing. Chris Christopherson got out of the Army and he was sweeping up. And But then, like, Johnny Cash covered uh, Sunday morning go coming down and that. But And uh, Willie, it took years as a performer. He was a great songwriter before that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're in the right place, and it time will time will work out. Hoping so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And things. Uh, 
Things will eventually. Uh-oh. A birthday oh, Easy G. No, no kissing. Easy G oh has a uh, a birthday surprise. Uh, she he is uh, handing he is handed uh, he is handed Amanda McCarthy a uh, a bag. What is that like a plastic bag? What's and uh, what yeah. we, what marshmallow we, pop? Uh huh. <laughs> um, kind of religious magazine. <laughs> wow. Hey, yeah, I'm right. into that. I, I'm a fan of Jesus. Yeah. Um, and um, oh, some coloring stuff. Thank you, Eric. That's so sweet. Wow. That's uh, that that that's uh, you're way way far away from the microphone, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> have you signed the wall yet? Oh yeah. No, oh. I, I didn't know that was a thing. We gotta oh, we gotta have you uh, sign Can the use wall. A crayon. But, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Eric. Let me put your mic back okay, on. I'll start with this guy, Gonzo. And he kind of got suspended for a couple of weeks by doing it. But, so then, I, but then the suspension lasted a little longer because they just wanted to make him wait. Yes, yes. He was gone for like a month. But, he, but he, he's the one that signed the wall first. And everybody else has done it. He's a trailblazer. At first, <laughs> at first the suits Eric, weren't... Uh, what's the next song going to be? Oh, yeah. Well, this is my crazy story. At first, the suits weren't a big <laughs> big fan of the uh, writing on the wall. But as you can see now, they... Eric, the, uh, brick by brick. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's going on? Oh, yeah. The... Um, <laughs> A fr- uh, I don't know if I told you the story too, a friend of mine, uh, I alerted him that you were going to be on Channel 9 about, about two months ago. I think it was last month. I think it was August. You were on Channel 9? Yes, that I was did. Vi- that was videotaped months ago, probably, right there? No, actually, I. Um, really? I filmed it, I sent it in, and they aired it like a week later. Well, anyways, I, the, uh, a friend of mine knows I'm a big fan of yours. But I said, uh, I called him from the hospital because I was in the hospital at the time. And the, uh, he said, wow, he said, he does, does a great job. He never seen you play before. I was like, he's not a big music guy at all. So he's a, more of a uh, not into music, which is which is okay. But uh, he said, "Wow, he said you did a great job." Oh, very nice. Very and of nice. course, when you were playing the uh, the nurse, Eric could nurses, be a good public relations one of the nurses, <laughs> to put you between like your fans. You know, I've uh, heard so many people be like, "Eric Gagnon told me about you." Yeah. Like yeah. one of the nurses' helpers oh. came by. And I went, and of course, the song was played. And I started. Tearing up. I said, you okay? I said, oh, yeah, happy tears. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, would you like to play another song, Amanda? Sure. Not um, not, not that we don't enjoy Eric's uh, stories, but. So we, we kind of told two <laughs> simultaneous stories. Should I play Should I play the Stevens song or should I play the Tiki Bar song I sang on WMUR? Oh, uh, yeah, Tiki Bar. Tiki Bar? All right. Yeah. The song is uh, based uh, partially on true and untrue events. Uh, that can be open to interpretation however you want. Uh, but the main goal is that we're going to go get drunk on a tropical island. This is Tiki Bar. Scorpion bowl for one, pretty please. Cherry on tap, sun in the trees. Open seat next to me, but I don't care, no. Hopped on a plane, kicked up my feet. First class runaway, living the dream. Drunk by quarter to three, but I don't care, no. He left me at the wedding when I lost my mind. But I got a one-way ticket to a blessing in disguise. Now I'm singing like, whoa, I'd rather be alone. I'd rather be tomorrow's night than yesterday's goodbye. Now I'm singing like, hey, hey. I best be on my way Because I got a date at a tiki bar With me, myself, and I Aloha and good night Toss my phone out into the sea Cute bartender looking at me I think I lost my ring But I don't care, no Pineapple sun, ocean blue Running stag on the honeymoon They're asking what happened to you But I don't care, no Fire at the altar, flowers in the sky Lighten up the luau, give me the rum And I will be just fine Now I'm singing like, whoa I'd rather be alone I'd rather be tomorrow's night than yesterday's goodbye. Now I'm singing like, hey, I best be on my way. Because
Cause I got a date at a tiki bar with me, myself, and I. Aloha and good night. I don't want to leave this island fantasy. Real life's calling to me, but I don't care. No. Now I'm singing like, whoa, I'd rather be alone. I'd rather be tomorrow's night than yesterday's goodbye. Now I'm singing like, hey, hey, I best be on my way. Hey, because I got a date at a tiki bar with me, myself, and I. Aloha and good night. I best be on my way. Hey, because I got a date at a tiki bar with me, myself, and I. Aloha and good night. Wow, very nice. Very yeah, nice. I can't believe this, but another, uh, uh, another favorite singer of mine, I don't know if you ever heard of him, Christopher Duffley. No. He was down in Nashville the other day, this month, Ooh. videotaping a uh, performance for springtime, some kind of, um, uh, what was it? Some kind of um, uh, not a radio show, but a uh, TV show that they're going to show in the springtime. And I'm going to try to, and the, uh, maybe I can try to get him to come on the show because he's, yeah. he has his own podcast called The Pro- Possible Mission. He's, um, I call him the most famous kid I know. He's blind and autistic. He's like a miracle child. He's been all over the country. Wow. He's in Canada. He sings all of the um, religious songs, gospels. Ooh. Not really gospel, but religious songs. He's been singing since he was like way high to uh, this is a little kid. He's played at Fenway Park. He's played at, over at the Fisher Cats. I mean. Uh, oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, dude, because of the Fisher Cats. I'm going to see, no, yeah. yeah. see if I can yeah. come on the show. Of course, he would have to have his mother or father with him because he's blind, obviously. <laughs> right. But he's a, he has his own podcast. And he's, he's, he's a wizard behind the, uh, he knows all the, um, all the, all those buttons there. He, you know, he has his own little studio at home. I can't help but wondering what the song Steven's about. <laughs> well, I wonder if we have yeah. time for that. Well, let's, uh, I'll tell you what. We'll, we probably don't. Well, yeah. No, we, we probably do, but we'll have to, um. Let, let's do this. We'll 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 end with with a song. But uh, Amanda, what what do we need to know? Yeah. How can people uh, follow you on uh, on social media and the website and everything? And what do you have coming up that you want people to know about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you can find me pretty much on all social media sites except for TikTok. I don't really mess with TikTok. Might be going away too anyway, but we won't talk about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh. We'll stay away from that. Um, but you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube. Um, I have a Twitter account. I don't really use it, but I'm there. And uh, you can also find me at amandamccarthy.com. Um, my website as well will have links to all of that. Um, and uh, coming up, I'm going to be going back to Nashville at the end of this week, um, just working on songs. Um, I'll keep trying to post, you know, clips and updates um, since I don't know when I'm releasing music next. Um, and I will be coming back to New Hampshire um, you know, around the holidays, December, January, and hopefully, given the way everything goes, I'll be able to book some shows, and I'll make sure I share that info on my website and social media as well. Very cool, very cool. Amanda, thank you again so much. Uh, thank you, Eric. Thank you, John Hopwood. Do you want to play us out? We'll, we'll uh, sure, yeah. one more song. I'll play the song, Stephen, that is not about Stephen Tyler. Okay, very good. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Well, they're all good. <laughs> I met Stephen on a hot summer night Just across the Mason Dixon line We were sweaty, sticky and sweet But Stephen laid the groove and he kept me on beat And I know he's a thousand miles away But Stephen lots of room every night I play He's my Louisville love He's my Louisville love He's my Louisville love I can't get enough He's my Louisville love He's my Louisville love By the light of the moon I swear to God I'll see him soon Punky spirit with a gentleman's soul 
symphonies of silver and a heart of gold. Knew them only but for a night. But what we have was special and I know it's alright. Here's my Louisville. He's my Louisville love. He's my Louisville love. I can't get enough. He's my Louisville love. He's my Louisville love. By the light of the moon, I swear to God I'll see him soon. Hey, hey. He's my Louisville love, he's my Louisville love, I can't get enough. He's my Louisville love, he's my Louisville love, by the light of the moon, I swear to God I'll see him soon. By the light of the moon, I swear to God I'll see him soon. By the light of the moon, I swear to God I'll see him soon.